Greetings everyone and welcome to yet another My Auntie Musings series um, and as you can probably make out from the from the uh, rough sketch on the already on my paper uh, we're doing yet another portrait and this time it's my little little panther fin so um, yes uh, last last series we did sage and this previous series we did Kit Kat um, one or the other might um, come in and visit from time to time <laughs> who knows where we get them synced up with the, with their um, um, portraits but uh, anyway um, so uh, Finn is a little black little black kitten well she's a year old now um, almost exactly a year old and and that's kind of why I'm doing these these uh, these two portraits of Sage and Finn they're both very close in age and I received them um, actually on the on the 6th I think um, which is when Friday when are we now I don't know um, anyway um, so this is the this is the time of time last year that I that these two little kittens came into my life um, so um, last week was last um, series was was sage she's a predominantly white calico um, and Finn is is black with these wonderfully striking um, yellow eyes but uh, we're only going to do one because she's in profile at this for this portrait right and she's sitting under a as a usual spot she's probably there in this moment um, under the um, hibiscus shrub um, in the shade <laughs> looking out for any unsuspecting lizards or whatever that she might that might come across her path to their demise um, right so welcome any any other new uh, subscribers to my channel um, I really appreciate it and if you're if you've newly hopped upon my channel then welcome and I hope you enjoy what you see if you do then hit the subscribe button uh, the bell icon so that you get notified of future uploads and um, like share comment um, I always appreciate it so yeah without further ado let's get on with it um, as I said I have done a rough a rough um, skeleton sketch um, so I'm going to basically build on that uh, as we go forward this is going to be much much easier in terms of tonal value because sage is black I mean Finn is black I'm gonna get their names mixed up from time to time of course um, being black with this with this rich black fur that she has uh, the black as I've explained in, in previous sessions the, whereas sage reflects the light sage's fur being mo mostly white very pure white um, her, her fur reflects the light very very much um, so that so much so that that she sort of she's a sort of glow in the dark kind of cat. Um, Finn, she's so dark. Her fur is so so darkly black that she absorbs the light. So any shading, sh um, contrast, and what have you is 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 almost not there. <laughs> you really have to look hard, and and sometimes even even. Uh, especially for for a portrait like this and to create some interest I'm going to have to exercise a little bit of artistic license um, in perceiving her form um, however that said uh, there is some and that I will make make the most of I will up the contrast um, for the highlighted areas um, a kind of a bluey silver um some of the dark areas obviously i'll be using compressed charcoal in this piece um and the, for that deep contrast um the deep darks and then the lighter dark everything is dark pretty much but but the lighter darks i shall be using um 
a little bit of brown um, as well because she's got this at times when the light catches her fur perhaps there's dust in her fur and so on um, it catches it when it catches the light a little bit it, it, it there's a brownness to it so you know yeah I'm going to work with those with those sort of colorings to build up this hopefully quite an interesting quite an interesting little portrait I had been mulling over what I'm going to do, which port, which I've got, uh, because I've got loads and loads of pictures of, of both um, Sage, Finn and Kit Kat, of course, to choose from. But wow, to actually choose which portrait I'm going to do, because this is the first, first of her portraits for both, for all three of them, in fact. Um, and so it's quite a, Quite an occasion, especially because it's a person, a very, very personal thing, and uh, I do love my kitties very dearly. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's a very personal thing, and also, um, yeah, I needed to get the right, the right thing, you know, the right image and the right look and. Do I show both her eyes? Do I look for something like that? Or do I just capture her in profile like this? And this is what I settled on. And in fact, just catching her, capturing her in her leafy, in her leafy spot under the hibiscus bush. Um, kind of, it, it's kind of her. It's, it's, it's very much Finn in character. She's a bit of a scaredy cat. Is Finn, as I think many black cats are, can be, and uh, and so she she kind of tends to, to to hide quite a lot. So she you'll find her in shadow, shadowy areas and she, and just just lurking. On the flip side, she's a very very bubbly little thing, and uh, if if you know if you do know her. Um, or when you get to know her, um, she's this little font of joy. Um, she literally, if she if she was a dog, she'd be wagging her tail profusely as well. So she's a a darling little thing in that respect. Not that her sister Finn is is a sage is not. Um, it's just that yeah, she's got this very particular. Um, bubbliness to her when she's when she's comfortable with you when she's comfortable with her with her environment and yeah Kit Kat doesn't much like her kind of what's what's not to like grumpy cat grumpy Kit Kat um so he's always hissing at her and carrying on and uh, he doesn't like it but anyway um all she wants is love and uh and appreciation which she gets from me so I suppose that's enough <laughs> i don't know um so this is a case of building and building and building and building um lots of charcoal work in fact i'm going to even go where's my thick black yeah i've got a lot of just wanted to I just wanted to first of all sketch out these just subtle yes and of course I have also, I'm going to depict I think part of the the whole setting and and uh, character of this of this the artwork as a whole is to is to depict some of these some of the leaves that she's that she's lying under so that I'm going to do quite rudimentarily at this point
And you'll see I've used a, I've used a grid for this piece. I, I, I generally don't, um, except for portraits, because I really need to get the, some certain specific characteristics. Finn, hello. Oh, she's just looked in and then she's popped on. So, yeah, so you have to, I have to get, it's very hard to freehand sketch a portrait if you're looking to get accuracy and unless you're doing a, unless you're doing a kind of looks like a almost caricaturish kind of rendering, um, each to their own but uh, for this for these portraits especially I need to get uh, I need to get it right you need to get and, and, and especially for portrait commissions and so on as well you, you you need to get that because for portrait commissions especially for pets and things like that and depending where the commission comes from if it's overseas well I don't get to meet the subject so um, it's very diffi difficult one has to be very specific with regards to looks um, um, and recognizable characteristics and so on and so forth. Sometimes that comes through in, in, the, in just, just the rendering of the character, um, the energy of the piece and what, and that's going to largely apply here and, and that's why I've got it in this kind of setting. But uh, yeah, so so that, that being said, I had to just set it up so that I got everything in the right place proportionally, if nothing else, um, so that everything is, is, is set nicely and I've got the right proportions and everything's in the right place, her eyes in the right place in relation to her nose and, and those sort of things. So she actually looks, you know, you can, you can, you can tell, or I can tell most importantly that it is Finn. <laughs> And not just any arbitrary black cat. If you know what I mean. So she has just come in and she she, she kind of looked in the door and and then headed off down the passage. Maybe sometimes she'll pop in and say hello that you can Get to meet her. Once I have these, now these basic um, outlines, principles um, of, of her form, I now can doodle. I, my, my, my happy place is doodling and just playing with this piece it's just wonderful to then be able to let go and just oh. now I start to work with form and and the way the fur sits and all that sort of thing even at this early stage which is really just about getting the composition in play This morning on this morning on Facebook, uh, I I posted a pic of well Sage and Finn, but up, up the leopard tree. But um, but I posted a pic of the uh, the early morning sky, and uh, I didn't sleep so well last night. The alarm kept on going off and what have you. It's another story. Um, so I didn't I didn't get. I got some sleep, but not not enough, and and uh, so I woke up in a bit of a dwell this morning, and and so my post said spring is sprung. <laughs> Gosh, southern hemisphere, um, it's autumn or fall, if you want to call it that, in the, from the states. Um, yeah, 
thing has definitely not sprung for a, at least for a while until later in the year down here in South Africa. So, um, yeah, don't often make that mistake, but yeah, but we do make mistakes. It's okay. I'll live. And Finn has this, one of the things that I really love about her little face, she's got, she's got this, she's, she's got this kind of smile. And I'm really trying to, I really want to try and capture that, but quite subtly, of course. But this lovely little smile on her face that she always has and happy go lucky little thing. This is going to look like nothing on earth um, for the first for the first part, and maybe this entire session. But but uh, as I set it all up and get all these nice little little uh, low light low lights in place. Once again, I'm going to have to pay very close attention to the eye. So important. So very important. Oh, I've got an itch on the back of my skull. Oh, that's better. Right. Um, and that will come the detail just like uh, the, the, the one that I worked on with Sage uh, the last series was uh, the detail of the eye came right towards the end of the of the series the last day so you'll have to wait unfortunately to see her little eye coming to life and in it's all it's a wonderful gold brightness you're not going to see much for a while <laughs> I fear Work with the work with the contours and build that up. I just I'm not going to make her as black as she is. Um, so I'm going to try as far as I can to just work with the charcoal and then use my compressed charcoal for the more extreme highlight areas. You know, much like, much like the folds in black satin, you'll see that and you'll see the reflections and, and, and so on. Um, and her fur is much the same. So I'm giving it a very similar treatment. It is this, this kind of satiny look. Um, I want to try and pull through here.
also to try and it's 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 quite a trick because depending the, the the blackness of her fur brings about a certain flatness it just flattens it flattens light <laughs> so you get very little very little discerning uh, um, to discern between between the the shades it's all within a couple of percentage points um five percent or so um except for the more you know the the, the more uh the brighter highlights the rest of it the bulk of her is just this very very subtle changes in tone and now I have to work quite carefully with this piece because I don't want to I don't want to kind of overkill I don't want to understate either I'll oh, just work slowly and progressively. Hence the four, the four sessions that I that I usually require for, you know. And, and it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice um, time frame that I that I give myself because I don't. First of all, I don't like to to constrain myself in terms of time, but I suppose one has to. But uh, so I give myself four sessions. Um, and usually if, if needs be the last session will be an hour long um, sorry just putting in here a little I just need to get the eye sorted out for now yeah so the four sessions are you know, I can I can then add and I can then extend the last session to an hour, uh, depending on my needs, and that I can determine during the previous uh, uh, towards the end of the previous session, the last the penultimate session rather. Um, now I'm gonna get I'm gonna try and go. <laughs> you see now. As, I, as, as it happened with, with Sage's portrait, it's quite interesting because you know, how these things turn out, because I, it, it, it became this very, I, I don't know, it's quite, quite unusual for me as the artist who's busy working on these pieces. When I set out with, the, with no expectations as to the final result, what it's going to actually end up looking like. And with Sage's and with Kit Kats as well, it kind of took on this kind of, I don't know, there's a playfulness, um, an almost synthetic, gosh, I don't know the word, I don't know what word I'm looking for really, um, a synthetic quality to the, to the look, almost like, like, like almost like, like a, like a candy floss look, I mean, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't know if it is that even, but and as I set out now with this piece, now she obviously the the the, the colouring and the, the the not colouring black, but um, the form and everything is very different to to Kit Kat and Sage, who had a lot of definition. Um, so I'm setting out now as I'm working here. I'm thinking, oh, this is looking. It might be quite interesting if it takes on a, a sort of a more graphic. Um, appeal but at this stage who knows and that's the beauty of it because I get to discover as I go along what's gonna what's gonna happen with this piece how it's gonna turn out as long as I've got all the basics in place and then I can just let go and let it let it create itself and that's the that's really amazing I love I love that about about art it doesn't matter it doesn't matter there's no hard and fast rule as to what needs to transpire because at the end of the day 
it's perfect and as it should be. As with everything in life, I guess. And that was something that my dearly departed mentor, Rod Finney, taught, used to always say to me when I was worried about things and, and you know, was concerned and stressing about something. And, you know, he would always say to me, everything is perfect and as it should be in this moment. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the rest. Let it all just happen as it should, as it must. And uh, and I've I've kind of adopted that way of way of being. Um, for a number of years now, kind of stood me in good stead because we do tend to over worry things that we worry about stuff that isn't, to put it plainly. You worry about stuff that isn't. You worry about stuff that hasn't happened yet, and it might or might not happen. So what's the point in worrying about something that hasn't happened yet? Unless you will it, will it to happen, which is what happens when you worry. Because <laughs> you give all your attention and focus and concern and everything to, to worrying about something that... It, but basically incapacitates you, so you can't actually do anything to, 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 to change the to change what you've created. Um, you just entrenched it, entrenched the fear more and more, such that it such that it actually comes to pass. Um, it's very different to to actually worry is very different to concern or um, or 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 creative action, uh, definitive action, and choices, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you need to be in, a, in the right space of acceptance um, in, order to, in order to manifest what needs to happen, not what needs to, or, or, or in, a, in order to be in the, in the, on the right um, frequency in order to manifest what you require, what you need, what really is in place. So, yeah, worry is there's no point in it. It, it's, it doesn't serve. It doesn't help you in any way. We all know this, of course, but myself included. We all know this, but we, we do tend to worry. And worry just then gets the better of us and then... Ah, but whether we worry or not, it's going to turn out a certain way. If we don't worry and our, we apply ourselves to what we actually want, well, things can go very differently sometimes. We get more clarity, perspective, and possibility arises from that. Anyway, little pearls of nonsensical wisdom. This is the musings part of my artsy stuff, by the way, of my artsy musings. <laughs> Tends to erupt every now and again. And as I said before, if you have any, if you have any observations about whatever I might talk about or say or my, my musings, um, if you have any, any thoughts upon the matter or what I'm busy doing here, um, if you have any any asks then please go ahead and and in the comment section and and ask away I, I'm more than welcoming of, of any comments and I will always respond to anything that's authentic of course I don't respond to to uh, negative stuff and and uh, invitations to invest and all sorts of crap like that I, I'm not interested but uh, if you have any authentic comments or something that you'd like to ask or discuss with me go ahead please I'll happily engage with you and if it's some, somewhere I can something I can help you with on a on a deeper level then by all means I'll message me and I shall give you my email address or whatsapp number or whatever 
and we can take it further from there. But yeah, nevertheless, whatever it's. So having said that about her, about her, uh, her fur being so dark that it absorbs the light, there are, there are subtleties, like I said, to work with. Um, there is that 5% or 10% perhaps of play of light, little undulations in the surface on, on her fur, changes in direction of the way her fur sits. Um, and I can play with that quite nicely. So that's why I'm looking at this and thinking this it could turn into quite a nice sort of graphic piece in in certain places. And uh, it's fun. It's a fun piece to play with because because fun is fun too. Just kind of marking out a little bit of a, bit, a little bit of nose here. Ten minutes left of this session. I think we're making quite good progress, actually. Yeah, so there's quite a few little subtle changes of changes of subtle changes of of shadow and little 
little plays of light. Yeah, so just getting it going quite roughly at this point. And you can start to almost pick up how her body is positioned. She's got this, she's got her little paws in front and then she's lying sideways, so her back, her, her hindquarters are lurking over here. And you can just see, almost see her, the bend of her, her knee. Um, yeah, that's very subtly darker in areas and so you can just get the the uh, the dynamics of her form and I can kind of do that pick up on that with the uh, direction of stroke as I follow certain contours and patterns of of light play. And then her back paw just peeking in there and the rest of hers trailing off to the side. Very rudimentary for now, which is absolutely fine. It's giving me a a nice uh, foundation to work forward with. Yeah, so we've got these these leaves that are sort of coming into the foreground here and then behind her, around her. So she's kind of amidst, in the midst of the, uh, the low-lying leaves of the hibiscus. Well, it's a Japanese lantern hibiscus, but we won't see any of the, of the, of the flowers in this particular piece, but it's a hibiscus nevertheless. So you've got, yeah, you've got these nice green leaves and that'll be the, that'll be the, also the, uh, the nice bit of color that we'll have in this piece as well. Just 
just a couple of minutes left now. And as I work, almost every mark that I make will become will 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 further determine her particular look and character. Yes, but I'm quite happy with the way this is going. Um, obviously, um, due to due to the difference in colour between Finn, who's black, and Sage, who's predominantly white, um, there's a lot more charcoal being going to be used in this in this artwork. A lot more. <coughs> and aside from the leaves, there's going to be, and your eye, there's virtually no, no other colour. Which would be quite an interesting outcome as well, you know, in and of itself, just with the, with the starkness of colour in her body and, and, and this foreground. Um, versus the leaves. And which I'll tone down quite a lot, but her eye I'll make a lot more striking. Because it is. Alrighty, yeah, folks. I think I'm, I think I'm done for today's session. Well, right, you know, right there we go. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed what you've. What, what you have witnessed so far and what you've heard, um, etc. <laughs> yeah, so as I said, please do um, comment if needs be. I'm always going to be willing to answer any questions or uh, respond to any, um, any comments. So, yeah. Um, well, we'll continue tomorrow. Um, we might start adding a little, a little bit of colour in as well. In fact, we'll definitely start to add a little bit of colour in. It's a hint of green and so on and so forth. Um, so yes, I hope to see. I hope you see me again then. Um, so meantime, do take care. Uh, be good. Be kind. Be gentle. Be caring. Be loving, etc. And I bid you oodles and oodles of toodles. Yeah. So see you again next time, folks. Uh, take it easy. Have a good one. Bye. And don't forget to doodle.